you for that warm welcome. This is The Early Show and I'm your host, Aidan Stone. Hey, I came upon this. We get up at 12 and start our work at one, an hour for lunch and then at two we're done. Jolly good fun. It's year nine's timetable. <laughs> now we've been in lockdown now for what, 40 weeks? Uh, 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights in the wildebeest, the wilderness. <laughs> and I think it's time that we addressed the effluent in the room, the elephant in the room. Not a real elephant, of course. That would be ridiculous. It's just a finger of speech. <laughs> so have we flattened the curve? Oh, come on. I haven't been to the gym for six weeks. Well, 20 years in six weeks. <laughs> Can we open up? Should we open up? Well, I was born at an early age in my hometown, and I never really came to terms with the splitting up of my favourite band. Not that kind of opening up. Although talking about problems is the best medicine. Well, it's not, is it? Medicine's the best medicine. <laughs> but medicine should only be taken with a prescription from and consultation with a medical professional. <laughs> now, here's a maths problem for you. If we got, say, a thousand students and 30 teachers, and they all have to be socially distanced by two meters, how big does the school need to be? <laughs> Answers on a postcard, please, to the education secretary. We've got a great show for you this morning. We're going to do some laughter yoga with um, well-being coach Frederica Roberts. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Tufty is sensibly playing in his garden during the lockdown. Oh dear, what's happened to the ball? It's landed in the middle of the road. Well, they can't go out and get it. Oh dear, with exercise over, they might as well go back inside and watch YouTube. What's this? The ice cream van isn't an essential service and shouldn't really be out during the lockdown. Ice cream! Tufty is in his house, but would really like an ice cream. His mummy says they can go as far as the gate. But who's this? It's Harry Hare and Willy Weasel. They shouldn't be out playing in the street. What's Willy Weasel doing? He's bought himself an ice cream. Oh dear, Willie's been run over. Poor Willie is hurt. Very luckily, Policeman Badger comes along to help. Oh my word, says Policeman Badger. You are both silly boys to defy the government's advice and not stay inside during the lockdown. Now Willie's been hurt, and he won't be able to play with you for a long time. Please welcome wellness coach Frederica Roberts. Right, uh, so we'll start. Now, I always mess up the start, so bear with me. I always <laughs> say something stupid, so we'll just go for it. Yeah. Frederica Roberts, great to not... To, you see, I did it. I did it. <laughs> Frederica Roberts, great not to have you with us this morning. Good morning, Aid. Great not to be with you this morning. Now, you describe yourself as a... Well, a well-being coach, or you're, you're, you're interested in your expertise in well-being, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, yes, it's, it's all about really looking after our mental health. And I come from this, um, from the perspective of, you know, even if we're well, we can always be better. You know, if you imagine your, your well-being, your mental health as a scale from, say, minus 10 to plus 10, you know, um, if you look at psychology in general, it always looks at the people who are sort of minus and, and how can we get them to zero? And um, positive psychology, which is what I work in, says, well, why should we just be satisfied with being at zero? You know, let, let's get ourselves towards plus 10. Let's, let's be in a really great place mentally. And so that's what I do. I work mostly with schools. I work with teachers and I work with students uh, from all ages, um, from primary school all the way to A-level, on, on helping people with techniques uh, to, to actually be the best that you can be in terms of how you feel. And... Um, 
I've come to this from a mixture of personal experience and study. So my personal experience is that uh, both my daughters, who are now young adults, they're, they're in their 20s now, uh, but they, they were both born with severe heart conditions um, and quite life-limiting potentially, actually. Between them, they've had two open heart, no, three open heart surgeries, sorry, and uh, two cardiac arrests out of hospital, <clears throat> which uh, people don't generally survive, but they've actually survived and thrived past that and um, so the situation that we're in at the moment actually in lockdown it's kind of something that as a family we've experienced numerous times because life would be tootling along quite nicely and uh, we've all learned to kind of not think about the heart condition day to day it doesn't affect us we just live as normal and then something would happen and suddenly our lives would be plunged into this bizarre bubble of just being in a hospital and time standing still but also moving very fast and just waiting for stuff to happen all the time so it's something that i've kind of experienced over and over again and that fam as a family we've experienced and i was really interested at the time i wasn't working well-being i was working in recruitment and um i i had worked as a teacher as well um and I was really interested in taking that experience and looking at what is it that some people can have experiences like that and come out of it and really thrive. Um, and, and other people find it really difficult to come out of that negative cycle and, and go spiral further and further downwards into depression, whatever happens in your life. And so I started looking at positive psychology and the science of well-being. And there's amazing research out there. And today I'm going to share some of the things that we can do that are based on that research that are really simple, but that, that have helped me. Some of the stuff I was doing instinctively. And now that the research is behind it, in fact, I thought I'd invented something great. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. I've come up with all this stuff that yeah. I do for myself and it works. And a bit disappointing. I looked at the <laughs> research and I thought, oh, People have done it before me. <laughs> it's not just me. But actually, that means that what I'm talking about, it's not just me. It's not just yeah. my experience. There's some solid research behind it, which is great. Right. So um, you said we were going to do something. Are we going to do it now? I mean, what? I yes. I thought I'd do a little warm up activity just to introduce some of the stuff that we can do to, to help us with our well being. So you're going to need some piece of paper and a pen or pencil. And I'm going to take my watch off so I can time us for one minute. And I'm going to give you a really simple task. And for the students and the parents watching and maybe other teachers as well, um, you can do this. They can either do it if they're on their own. They can use one of us as their partner. Or if they've got somebody else that they can bring into the room at this point, it's a really good time to bring somebody else in. So it's a really simple task, okay? You're going to draw a portrait of the person that you're looking at. Um, and you're going to take one minute to do that. But there is a little challenge to this. You're not allowed to look at the paper while you draw the portrait. Okay. So for one minute, I'm gonna put my watch up here so I'm not cheating. So when I look, I look at my watch and not my paper. But the, the challenge is that you're gonna just look at the person for one minute and whatever comes out, and then we'll share bravely what we've actually done in that time. So are you ready? I'm not, because I've just... <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my... Um... Uh, you'll see why why I've delayed in a second. So um, we haven't practiced this either, by the way. So uh, <laughs> all right. So put uh, you on the spot completely. <laughs> when you said pencil, I thought, well, I've got. I don't want to use a pen. I want to use a pencil. So that's what I've got here. So um, okay. So I'm ready. Get a pencil. Right, ready when you are then. Okie dokie, right. So if you are ready, we're going to go on three, two, one, go. Not looking, okay? Not looking at the paper. Oh dear. <laughs> it's going to be all over the place. That's kind of the point. <laughs> I'm going to be really embarrassed. It's going to be too small, I think, as well. <laughs> Uh, I apologise in advance. Well, I apologise in advance because <laughs> you know, I've captured your gorgeous details and it's going to look like a new Doctor <laughs> Who monster or something. You can see from my eyes. Uh, I'm not, I'm We've not, got about 30 seconds left. <laughs> I'm not looking at the pad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Are we doing for time? About 15 seconds left. <laughs> it's going to be all over the place. 
Okay, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> now I can't draw it at the best of times. So go on, who's going to go first? Well, this is sort of, it's like, um, it's like uh, Eric Morecambe. It's all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. <laughs> some, of the, some of the things. Oh yeah, oh my word. <laughs> Love it. So the glasses <laughs> seem to have floated off your face and you, I seem to have turned into a moustache, so I apologise for that. <laughs> um, Yours is a <laughs> well, that's uncanny. That's uncanny. Yeah, you need to keep everything in, I think I've got the hair. In the form, yeah. The hair's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So there's a reason why I do this activity, and I love to do this activity. I do it a lot when I do um, teacher training sessions as well with teachers, um, because actually there's a lot going on in that activity. What are the, the key things about well-being? Um, there's a brilliant um, kind of theory, but it's, it's a very well-supported and research theory called the, the Broaden and Build Theory of Positive Emotions by a researcher in America called Barbara Fredrickson. And it's about um, if we can experience more positive than negative emotions in a day. So it's not saying that we should just negate what's, what's bugging us, but it's just about trying to superimpose that with lots of little moments of positive emotions. And if we experience more positive than negative emotions, what it does is it broadens our horizons so it enables us to have better relationships with other people it enables us to see more opportunities to do better at school to do better at work um, to to just generally be in a better place um, it builds our internal resources and the biggest resource it, it builds is resilience which boy do we need that right now so um, it builds our ability to be resilient to bounce back from from setbacks and then further research that Barbara and her colleagues did actually said that it also undoes some of the negative effects of stress and negative emotions. So if we experience sustained stress, we build up cortisol in, in our body, which is a stress hormone. And that can have um, some really bad effects on our body quite physically so it can actually reduce our ability to fight infections for example it affects our immune system so actually having lots and lots of moments of positive emotions in our day can actually help us to undo some of those effects that we get from stress so that's really important particularly at times like right now so doing something like this activity i think hopefully you experienced it and all the the students and teachers and parents doing it at home hopefully experience it too that we laughed together and it was funny and it was not something too serious and so hopefully we experienced some positive emotions i certainly had a good laugh um what also happens is there's connection happening because actually for a minute you're making eye contact yeah. with another person yeah and, and th that connection and relationships is another really big foundation of, of being well. And so we can do that even when we're not in the same room. And that's really important to remember, particularly at the moment. And then there was teamwork going on because we were kind of in this together. You know, we knew it was going to be rubbish. We knew it was going to be appalling, but we were working together to kind of go, right, well, you know, it'll be what it'll be, but we're both doing this and it's a bit of a team effort. So there's a lot packed into a tiny activity. And what I wanted to share is that actually bringing positive emotions into our day doesn't have to be massive stuff it can be a one minute thing that, that really boosts our well-being um so that was the first activity are you ready for me to introduce another activity that students can do at home yeah let's go do, do we need a pencil for this no you don't need a pencil for this one no i've, I've, I've put you through enough now that's it <laughs> So this one is, uh, is another great positive psychology intervention, and it's called The Best Possible Self. And this is an activity that's been researched quite a lot as well in, in, in a study that looked at lots of different studies that, that looked at this, so a meta-study, uh, a meta-analysis. And, and what they found is that quite consistently doing this activity actually boosts optimism, and it also boosts our mood. So again, talking about positive emotions, being in a better mood, lifting our mood. And I first came across this um, when I started my master's in applied positive psychology, which I graduated from last year. And this was, I mean, it was a magical week. Let's not kid ourselves. I was in Paris doing this, which is quite nice. And um, the group we were with became, we're still massive friends and we live all over the world, all over Europe. And 
there was something magical in that week anyway. And so our tutor did this activity with us, but he, he, he took it a lot further in terms of we shared the results with each other, which you wouldn't normally do. And it was really powerful. And I took the, the visual results, which I'll share with you in a moment. And I put them, I, I'm looking up there because it's still up there on my little notice board above my desk. And I kept looking at it over the years and I started noticing that stuff from that best possible self was happening and was becoming reality. Now, the interesting thing is this is not meant as a goal setting activity at all. You're not meant to kind of think, what can I achieve? Um, you know, and, and, and I know in one of the past episodes, you've had David Heiner here, who's far better at talking about goal setting than I am. And this is not about goal setting. This is purely a positive psychology activity to, to boost your mood and boost your optimism but it can have a side effect occasionally of helping as a, as helping you achieve goals. So I'm just going to share this. A side effect of success. Is that exactly yes. A side effect of, of, of success, which can happen, but that's not but why the, you should do it. You do, but in and the long time you'll feel great. But this is, this, this is a exactly. win, win, isn't it? So. Exactly. And it is, it's all about feeling great. So before I share it, I'm just going to explain what it is. So basically you spend about 20 minutes somewhere quiet that you're not going to be interrupted and you think about a specific point in the future so you choose what point when i did it i chose to put myself five years into the future and you start envisaging what your life might look like at that point in the future if everything has gone perfectly exactly the way you want it to go so no obstacles, no, you know, no what ifs, no, I might not be able to do that. This is not about reality. This is just if everything went exactly how you wanted it to go, where would you want to be in five years time? And then you put yourself into that point in the does, future. Does it have to be that far ahead in advance? No. Could it be at Christmas? Could it be? It could be. You choose. It's completely arbitrary. Yeah, two o'clock this afternoon? <laughs> well why not actually because it's it's a mood boosting activity so set it to wherever you want it to be as long as it's a point in the future and you can do this as often as you want you know it's not like you say well I did it for next year so I'm not going to redo it for another year you do it as often as you want and you put yourself into that place so you imagine you're in that place in the future and you really start immersing yourself into you know what are you feeling what are you doing what are you thinking um, all of those things as if you're actually living that moment and you can do it as a drawing activity you could do it as a mind map you could do it as an essay you know whatever works for the way your brain ticks and visualizes these things and you just put down on paper what what that your life is looking like that uh, at that point in in the future so i'll share uh, what mine was like when uh, when i did this so can you see that now on the screen yeah okay so i'm just going to look out but is that, is that yes <laughs> some of it was quite personal so i've, I've, I've rubbed it out um, <laughs> Uh, but you can see I had certain headings. So I had um, family, friends, hobbies. I had financial. I had health goals, education and work goals, which were kind of linked together. Um, so if I just look at some of those, you know, I'd, I'd looked at that for February 2022, which was five years from when I did this. Mm. And at the point I was I was very, very overweight, which was giving me a few health problems. You know, I had a lot of pains with sciatica and so on and and so you know you can see i'm saying I'm, I'm a healthy weight i go swimming and walking regularly well more than ever now i walk for an hour every day since we've been in lockdown but you know i used to go swimming when we still could i was walking quite regularly and enjoying it um i have other aches and pains because i'm not that young but the sciatic is gone um and yeah full of energy vitality drink plenty of water you know all of that kind of thing is is really key in what i do in my life now education wise I said I, that at that point I would have started a PhD um, well I'm not doing a PhD I'm doing a doctorate in education um, so same kind of thing uh, so I started that uh, in September last year um, Oh, very boldly, this was in my first week of my of my master's, and I said I will have done my master's with distinction. I did. Right. <laughs> I got a distinction in my master's. Um, so there you go. So it's worked quite well as a goal setting, but that wasn't what it was intended as. But that gives you an idea. And can and I what I found found before you say anything else, there, yeah. I was just looking for the wording of that on that. And you wrote everything in the present tense. You didn't say I will. You said I am. Yes. So you were talking about the future, but you were putting it in. The present tense and every 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 sentence was in the present tense 
Yes, absolutely. Because you're writing it, whether you do it as a, as a mind map like I did or as an essay or whatever, you're doing it all from the point of view of you've placed yourself in that point in the future. Right. So you are at that point and this is what you're feeling. This is what you're experiencing. This is what's happening to you right now. And that's really important. So thank you for picking up on that because that's the key. You're convincing yourself that it's real, aren't you? That's what you yeah. do when you put it in that tense. You're convincing yourself you've already got it, even though you haven't got it. Exactly, exactly. And whether it then happens or not, I mean, it just so happens that a lot of mine did happen because I think having it up on my notice board kind of spurred me on to keep working towards it. So it did work as a goal setting. But really, because when you do the activity, you're putting yourself at that point in the future and all these things that you want to happen have happened and you're living them and you're experiencing. That's why mm -hmm. it gives you that boost in mood and that boost in optimism because it makes you feel that it's possible. And, and that's the key to that activity. So that's something that I would really encourage your students to do um, as they're watching this video and take themselves through this activity and do it as often as they want to do it and, and see how it makes them feel. And it's really important to kind of reflect when you do these activities as well on how do I feel as a result of doing that, you know, because not everything will work for everyone. So this is a well-researched activity, but it's, it's about, you know, did it work for me? Did it make me feel better? And if it mm. did, I can do it again. So that's, that's a really great um, activity to do. W have we got time? Would you like to do some? I just want to ask on that if you if you yeah. you could as part of the activity you said it, 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 it side effect is it's a goal setting thing but it's it's about making you feel feel happier stronger more relaxed yeah. more confident in the moment but it'd be interesting isn't it that some of the things we think we want to do or we think we want to have or we think we want to be doing in the future or the near future um, they're imposed upon us they're all their their secondhand ideas that things that we always thought but yeah. we haven't questioned them but this is interesting I wonder if the side effect of this as well is that you know I, I, I'm imagining myself um, living in a certain place or um, doing a certain job and then if you thought about that in that task and thought actually don't like it <laughs> yeah I mean that's <laughs> that's a very good point upgrade, yeah. upgrade upgrade my visions and think of something something that does make you feel happy because sometimes we pick things uh, we think about our future and things that maybe parents or friends have said you know or or, or, or we've been we've been sort of pressured to think yeah i'm gonna be i want to be a youtuber or something like that <laughs> and imagine being that and think actually not rewarding at all you know um, um yeah so that's an inter another interesting thing about it. It is, it is. And obviously, yeah, and what I'd like to encourage everybody to do as they do this is to really think about what do I really want, you know, without the imposition of what I think I should do, yeah, or, exactly. or, you know, but just really what do I want to be doing at this particular point in time, whenever that is, you know, in the future. But you're right, things might still creep in that, that have come externally that we think we should do. So it'd be really interesting to actually then reflect on that and how did that actually make me feel and maybe i don't want that particular goal so that's that's a really good point yes thank interesting you thing about how you feel about what you're doing is different from what you have so um so i i, I have done it in the past i think we, we've all thought you think oh when i imagine the future i'm gonna have millions and millions of pounds or whatever it is or the big house or whatever and um and we told this all the time but we never believe it that you know um the massive amount of physical wealth won't make you any happier it's who you are that makes you that makes you happier so we're, we're so we're exercise here we're trying to think what are you actually doing in that future rather than what you have in yeah. that future i don't think you know just having a big have a nice sports car well you'll get a moment of joy out of it but yeah it's not sustainable is it it's, it's that yeah it's about what you're doing and, and how you feel um so you know if if i go back to just reading some of the stuff that i wrote i wrote i feel full of energy and vitality you know yeah. that's that's not something you have that's just something you feel and it's yeah. it's it's so it's about thinking about how how you feel in those moments I, and i put something like you know i revel in reading academic papers and research and and thriving from ongoing learning i mean i, I might not revel in it when i'm in the middle of doing an essay by the way <laughs> But, you know, that, that love of learning, it's, you know, when, when I wrote that, it wasn't just about I want the qualification. Of course, the qualification matters to me, but it's actually I want to enjoy that process. And that process is about the learning and, and enjoying that process of learning. And, and that's part of it. You know, so, again, it's, it's not about the having the qualification, but it's about the doing and the feeling yeah. of 
there's another thing that your all your things on that list had in common, and that was that you were you actually you were actually were in control of them all. You were they were yours. You were in control. They weren't a list of things that were done to you or that. Do you see, see the, yeah. how I mean the difference? It wasn't that you know I've I'm going to have a number one single. Well, that would reply that would require other people. It would require a vast amount of other people helping yeah. you know to fulfill that fill that goal. But you didn't do that. You you put a list of things that you were in control of. So you were going to get the the um, the doctorate. That's your work. There was, you didn't you weren't relying on anybody else to fulfill it. And yeah, it's interesting as well. Yeah, and and a lot of the stuff that was blurred out, but you know, there was a lot of stuff there about family relationships and things like that. And and actually, when I look back on that in the context of of what you're saying, it's true that even in that context, of course, what kind of relationship you have with other people, there is a very important factor, which is those other people. But actually, when I looked at that and how I wanted to feel, it was all about what what am I doing that's making those relationships yeah. the way that I want them to be? Because we still have control over that. You know, you might have a really irritating person in your life you might have somebody that you always clash with no matter what but actually when you start thinking about well what can I do to feel better about that situation yeah. what can I do to have different conversations with that person it changes things definitely we often think or we often say um, that so-and-so has made me feel sad or angry um, is that is that wrong is that right are we in control of how we feel I think, you know, to, to some extent, um, people can trigger us, I think, to feel right. a certain way. We can respond to certain things. And I think once we start reflecting, and maybe that comes a bit with age as well, you start noticing what your triggers are. You know, you start noticing who pushes your buttons and exactly how they push them. And actually, those of us who have children, and, and, and sorry to the students who are listening, but I'm sure they know they're doing it. You know, our children know exactly how to push our triggers. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure everybody watching this, that they have certain things that they know they do or say to their parents that or their siblings that will just it, it, it's you know blue torch paper isn't it um, my, my youngest daughter quite often owns up to when when both of them were at home growing up um, and it was the usual you know set the table clear the table load the dishwasher you know and she would kind of deliberately accidentally always load the dishwasher really badly so that Charlie, her older sister, would go, oh, go away, I'll just do it. You know, <laughs> so we all have these little things. So, and, and people who just trigger us. And, but what we have control over is how we respond yeah. to those triggers and, and how we kind of, if we recognize the triggers, we can kind of shift the perspective, shift how we respond, do something different to not just go, oof, you know, and blow up um, and, and or, or just go into a really horrible mood for the rest of the day. You know, there are things that we can do. It's, it's, it's something that takes practice, but just recognizing that is, is a really important step. And doing something like the, big poss the, the best possible self really does help with that kind of thing because it helps you to reflect. Well, I hope it helps me reflect on because someone put a knife in the fork drawer. And, oh, that was... <laughs> <laughs> How dare they? How dare <laughs> they? <laughs> no, we've got time for one more thing. Uh, what's that one more thing? Okay, well, the one more thing then I think we'll do, we'll end on a real high, if you're uh, willing to, to be up for a bit of fun again. <laughs> you look terrified already. Um, I thought we could maybe do a little bit of laughter yoga. Um, <laughs> it is a bit of a Marmite thing. It's a love or hate. Uh, okay. So it, it's fine. Have you not heard of it? Right, okay. great. Um, well, laughter yoga is basically um, being able to laugh without jokes or humor or comedy. Um, as my youngest daughter, Hannah, has told me on numerous occasions, and especially when I tried to do some stand-up comedy for charity a few years ago, um, she said, don't do that, you're not funny. Yeah, but that's my I'm act, not. isn't it? No, no jokes, no humor, no talent, that's my act. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's perfect, perfect for unfunny people like us, you see. Um, I'm not funny, but I can make people laugh. Well, I don't make people laugh. People choose to laugh with me. Um, and we can do this on our own, although it is a lot more fun when we've got somebody right. doing it with us. Um, and the idea is that although, of course, if you're laughing and it's fake, 
your brain, you know, your brain knows what's going on. Your brain knows it's not real, but you're still triggering the same processes in your body. So you're still releasing endorphins because when you laugh, you actually use a lot of muscles, your facial muscles, your abdominal muscles, and very importantly, ones we don't use very often, our intercostal muscles between our ribs. Um, so, you know, when you've had a really good belly laugh, sometimes your ribs ache the next day because you're, you're using those muscles you're not used to using. So it's a very big workout. So when you work out your muscles, you release endorphins and endorphins are basically known as the happy hormones. You know, you can release those by going for a jog or a bike ride, but laughing does that too. Um, you have to take really deep breaths when you laugh. And so if you're taking big breaths, you're really kind of getting a bit of the same effect of doing meditation as well, of filling your lungs, which is really great as well. Um, and again, that cortisol release that you get from exercise, you can get that from laughter. So, you know, you can release some of that stress that's pent up. And the way you do it, um, I used to do an activity when I was in, in places face to face and go, go up to the person next to you and shake hands. We're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be shaking hands with anyone. No. But the great thing is you can do mm. anything. So um, we're going to start with a really simple, we're just going to look mm. at each other and we're just going to start laughing. Just <laughs> like this. That's much easier for you than me. <laughs> 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 Are you going to practice on this? <laughs> right? I'm Are you going really to go for it? Now. Sorry? <laughs> I've spat on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do this you know and and really you can do this uh for, for as long as you want if you could do a laughter activity like this for 10 minutes a day that would be really good you really get a good workout from it um and then i'm just going to do you, you can do all sorts imagine any daily chore for example and turn it into a laughter activity okay so if you're imagining i mean even now your students will be doing some work from home and they're imagining perhaps writing an essay so they can take their pen and their paper and uh, they can just go kind of like <laughs> <laughs> and and just laugh and, and turn that into a laughter activity so i'll do one more with you uh because this is one where people think i'm completely crazy and um and uh, hopefully they'll laugh at me if not with me so as long as people are laughing that's fine so you can do this one with me okay so we're going to do some mental flossing we're going to clear our minds of all the rubbish that's in there clogging our thoughts up so imagine you've got a big piece of floss okay Hopefully everybody watching knows what floss is because they're doing this with their teeth regularly. It's a big piece of floss, wrap it around one finger. Okay, now very carefully thread it through one ear. Okay, and then careful because there's important stuff in there, but pull it through <laughs> the other side. Pull yeah. it carefully through the other side. Okay, wrap it around that finger too. So you've now got a piece of floss wrapped between your two fingers and we're gonna do some mental flossing and laugh. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, we can carefully pull it back out. And now we're just going to do a couple of really deep breaths. <laughs> can you still hear now? Are you all right? <laughs> and just a couple of really deep breaths. So, and as you breathe out on the next one, you can sigh and smile as you breathe out. Let all your worries go away. So, breathe in. <sighs> there you go and that's really simple so hopefully everybody's had a good laugh with us or at us <laughs> did you know um uh, tim brooke taylor who sadly died um last week from the from the virus he was a member of the the goodies in the 70s the um the comedy um trio and it's a true story that um somebody was watching the goodies episode and he literally actually died laughing Oh my goodness! And uh, and you know they were distraught that it you know caused a man's death by being so funny, and uh, but the, his wife wrote a letter to say well he'd actually he'd been suffering from heart condition for many years, and he he had a really happy end. <laughs> you <know? laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you're gonna go, you get, you know there, there are definitely worse ways to go. Absolutely. I mean, dying laughing. It's. Uh, it's it's certainly one of my favorite activities in life laughing so that's why i trained to to teach laughter yoga but it's it's such a powerful thing actually so i would say you know even if it's not laughter yoga because it isn't everybody's cup of tea but find every opportunity to laugh i'm, I'm referring it to the 
to this Joe Wicks thing. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, to, to me, it's more fun than doing exercise. Definitely. I mean, yeah, I bet you yeah. all those muscles working. That's I think I prefer that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's a great abs workout. So that works for me. And, and, you know, you can watch videos that make you laugh. You can just look at jokes, memes, whatever it is, but just make sure you have, again, coming back to where we started, you know, that uh, the, the broaden and build theory of positive emotions. There's nothing more positively emotional than, than having a good laugh. So whatever it takes, you know, do something that, that gets you to laugh throughout the day and, and more than once a day, because that's really going to help the, alleviate a lot of the stress we're all going through. Frederica Roberts, thanks so much for uh, for joining us in this format and uh, and helping us with all those exercises, making us making us laugh. And uh, whereabouts in the country are you at the moment? Where are you? I am in South Yorkshire, in Doncaster. Right, and of course we're in North Yorkshire. But um, when we're all unlocked, um, it would be great if you can make your way up here, and you'd be more than welcome to come and meet. I'd us. love That's to. Brilliant. All right, but for now, <laughs> thanks for Thank joining you. us. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Will do. Bye. Now, years ago, there used to be a television program called Screen Test, where uh, the viewers, the children, would send in their homemade films, um, little short little animations or funny films or disturbing dystopian narratives. And I thought, since that some of you I know make short films, why not send them in and we'll put some of them in the show? So if you've got a short film, come to a minute and a half, then send it in and let's all have a look at it. Now, we were sent a film this week you might recognize who's in it hello filing hall dave heiner here so you saw the early show the question is in your tutors in your one-to-ones in that peer session did you go rhino have you tracked down someone at the highest level who's got the skill set that you need have you gone rhino on that piece of work in school that you're afraid of or don't understand and you're going to smash it during this time remember skill up step up Go Rhino, set a massive goal, guys. See you on the other side. Bless you all. Well, that's it for this week. As you were, at ease, keep laughing, keep learning, and keep looking after one another.